We know very little other than that this is a securities fraud. This is a what I would consider classic securities fraud, using a press release for manipulative purposes. I mean, what, what the SEC will be looking into immediately is trading in the Denver stock options, trading in the stock, who sold, when the price spiked. But you know, this is this really is a classic securities fraud case for U.S. regulators. One that I believe ultimately mm -hmm. will result in both SEC charges and federal criminal charges. So I guess the focus will be on this press release service. How did it get onto their wire? One of the focuses will be what kind of verification yeah, I think, I think that's, they, the, the, they the ultimate goal from the regulator's perspective is to figure out who actually was doing the trading. In some respects, the you know the the press release service was a victim here. Um, at the same time, you know, they know different than anybody else. You know, this is a time of heightened vulnerability. People are trying to take advantage of, you know, all of all the COVID confusion, the pandemic distractions, and perpetrating, you know, frauds of, you know, of different types and dimensions, but also very aggressively. So, yes, you know, the press release service is going to need to check how did this occur. But at the same time, the real focus from the SEC's perspective is going to be on the trading itself. Where did that press release come from, ultimately? And again, it's something that's not going to be very difficult for the SEC to track down. The, I think the, mm -hmm. what likely will happen, particularly if the traders are outside of the United States or those responsible are outside the United States, the fact is we're likely to see freezing of accounts in which the trading occurred as a direct consequence of this investigation. But it will move very fast. Now, you note know that um, in 2017, we saw a broadly similar case. Um, a, a mechanical engineer was, was accused of manipulating the price of Fitbit stock uh, by making a phony regulatory filing. Um, so there is some precedent here. There's plenty of precedent. In fact, the interesting thing about the Fitbit case is you had a mechanical engineer who made $3,100. And that $3,100 not only brought him an SEC enforcement case, but a U.S. federal criminal case. So it's something that's taken very seriously. Oof. But it's not just... You know, it's not just Fitbit and and you know and false SEC filings. Press false press releases have been an issue for many many years. We're just seeing this happen more you know much more quickly. In 2015, we actually had a case involving tweets. You know, two tweets to manipulate the price of the stock. Um, there was the Elon Musk case in terms of his tweets. Granted, not the same scenario, but there's a real sensitivity to false information or misleading information that's being put into the marketplace to influence the price of the stock and how that can have a fraudulent effect. Yeah, it's, it is interesting. Is In an era of knee-jerk trading, um, these scams, maybe it's more tempting for people to pull them off because investors are so quick to jump on stuff like this. Well, you also have time that the people are really developing enhanced sophistication with manipulating the tools that they use involving the internet. And again, it used to be much more cumbersome to put out a, a false press release. Now it requires is somehow mm. accessing a system to be able to get that into the marketplace and having that immediate effect. And that's why the regulators are going to react very, very quickly.